YouTube, how the devil are you? My name is Hypocrisy and today I'm bringing you another episode of Search and Destroy Tactic Talk. For those of you that are new around here, it is a series where I take the good and bad points of a Search and Destroy game and talk about them and talk about the overall gameplay and how things went down. Uh, today I'm actually bringing you a gameplay which isn't my own, it belongs to uh, my brother-in-law and very good friend uh, Adam, otherwise known as Chubstep on YouTube and Xbox Live, it is an absolute beast gameplay, a 23 and 2 on cargo. And there's lots of good talking points, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the recording starts actually halfway through the second round. Adam is three kills up already, and he is a uh, round down due to joining late, so his, uh, his team are 1-0 down at the moment. He's using the DSR-50, which may be an obvious choice for this map. Uh, sniping is a really um, effective way to actually do well on cargo, but you have to be good at it and you have to know what you're doing. Adam's gone with the DSR-50, which is a great choice uh, for any sniper, really. And he's using the UAV Hellstorm Missile and Lightning Strike, which is a good killstreak setup. I perhaps would have swapped out the Hellstorm Missile for the Hunter Killer Drone, only because there are the cranes and things that obstruct your sort of uh, viewpoint uh, when calling in the aerial killstreaks. And I think the Hunter Killer Drone is a more direct way of getting a kill. So, he's currently on four kills now for the whole of this round. We start the game, and he's doing well. I really like this move here. He knows the guy's too far away from his MSMC, so he pulls out his sniper, but the guy does escape him anyway. And it's just the sake of chasing these guys down and making sure that he controls the engagement to his advantage. So, he remembers that the first guy ran off, and he manages to get a cheeky spray around the corner with those bendy bullets. So, all in all, it's a great round. He actually gets a six-man uh, ace on that round in the, uh, in the first round that he joined in this match. So, it is a good start. Cargo is a really interesting one to play. I think that when you're coming into sniping, the best way to approach it is to actually not snipe from the obvious places. <laughs> that may sound silly, but you know the like, for example, when he ran up through spawn there, there's the little uh, the sort of gap in those crates to the right hand side, which overlooks the whole of the middle map. That'd be a really obvious spot, and sometimes it's actually better to avoid those places if you are sniping because people least expect it, and you're actually least vulnerable to other snipers as well. So you can see him here, just calling in the Hellstorm Missile, and this is what I talked about on this map. It makes it very difficult with all the containers and things um, to actually kill people with that kill streak. So it doesn't go that great, but all in all, it's not a bad thing. So Adam chases down this guy. He knows that he's camping up in this spot, which is you know a real sort of hot spot for this map. It's where a lot of people go for cover, and he's just sort of feeling out now, leading with a nade, which is always advisable in search and destroy. Um, but he unfortunately gets killed here uh, being armed with a pistol. And that's the only difficult thing about using a sniper rifle. Normally once you have your perk load out and your attachment set up, it doesn't give you the opportunity to have another gun unless you run overkill, which not many snipers are going to use because toughness obviously trumps most perks in that situation. So you're left with the pistol, which, like in that situation, uh, leaves you at a disadvantage. Perhaps sometimes not, though, if you've got beast host connection. <laughs> so... Again, he takes a really good route here. This is probably one of my favourite routes in cargo. Straight down the middle. Uh, it's ballsy. People don't expect it. And he chucks a nade into the obvious camping spot to start off with. And he doesn't get a kill, unfortunately. But normally that's a really good spot to chuck a nade. So I really like that opening route that he takes there. And here he is again, leading with the pistol. Just feeling his way around the map. And he knows there's some activity going on here. And he picks out a really nice shot on the guy crouching, which is difficult to do. But unfortunately gets uh, outnumbered in that situation. Again, caught with a sniper rifle. Uh, which makes it difficult to obviously um, take both guys out. It's hard to get double kills in this game anyway um, without having a sniper. Um, but yeah, he knows that the game's not going that well to his advantage with the sniper rifle, so he switches out to the MP7 here, which is a really, really uh, great decision in my opinion. I think a lot of people um, tend to persist when they're not doing so well with a certain class, um, mainly out of pride, but you know sometimes it doesn't always pay off. and Sometimes you have to bite the bullet and decide to uh, change change a weapon uh, depending on the team you're using. So he gets a great C4 here. Adam is really good at the C4s um, and that is an awesome kill at quite a long range as well. So picking up a nice little two-piece in the far corner of the map and this part I really like. Watch what he does here. He sees a guy out there and he knows there's a scar arrow on the floor so he picks up that gun to equip him for the long range engagement and that is something that only comes from a player that knows exactly what he's doing and his experience at this game. I really like that decision and he's also now got a scar L for any other further long engagements that happen later on in the round. So dodging a bouncing Betty here, gets a bit lucky on the stairs and that guy probably could have shot him in the head but didn't um, and Adam survives a nice little battle there using the stairs probably to his advantage a little bit. So this round again he's just feeling out, he's in their spawn, he needs to be careful because he doesn't know who's around him and they get the bomb plant A so now he's got a decision to make. And again, there's a guy that he catches up here and just persists with the gun spray before taking him out. Um, a good decision again. I mean, those can always backfire the situations where you carry on spraying because if you had to reload, that guy probably would have had the jump on him. So he did well to persist and he got a little bit of luck there, which is important on this game. 
This route I really like actually, it comes out of the crates as opposed to coming from the conventional route which would be opposite the bomb site where that guy was actually head glitching for. And he comes out of the crates and gets a surprise kill on that guy and a really nice defuse to uh, pull the round back. So as you can see he's doing it for his team here, he's now 3-2 down and that was another 6 man ace in that round, the second in this game so far. So he's currently on 13 for 2 and doing really well. The MP7 is proving to be a great switch and it obviously just shows that you know changing your class and ultimately your tactics can really help you turn a game around, even though he was doing quite well with the sniper. So again, nice little tip for those of you that don't play search very often, switch to your knife when you're running, or switch to your pistol when you're running out of spawn, just gets you there places quicker, and he gets a nice little turn, and well, I'm not sure that guy was aware that he was there, um, but he picks up his Hellstorm missile. But yeah, switching to your um, secondary weapon for a bit of extra speed at the beginning is really important for map control, and you'll see Adam do that a lot, um, and you'll see a lot of good search players do that as well. So here he actually gets a kill with a Hellstorm missile, and he adds to his kill streak. So now he's just pushing the spawn again. Um, the basic tactics of a rusher like Adam, um, and similar to the way I play if you see my videos, is that the, the ultimate way to play Search and Destroy and to have the advantage is to push the enemy spawn and try and come around from the other side of them when they're not expecting it. Adam gets unlucky with the C4, but manages to follow up with a lovely kill with the MP7 there. And this bit I really like. He sees the guy across the crates and again gets that Scar L ready for that long range engagement. But he doesn't actually engage him. He knows that guy is still too far away, probably for a Scar L. And he decides to wait and perhaps not give away his position. Or make careless shots at a guy who's too far away to kill. So now he's just defending, keeping an eye on the A-bomb and middle map. And this is something that you need to do all the time in search and destroy. Make sure that you're in a position to cover both bomb sites or to cover both large areas of the map. Again, having another look at A just for alternative viewpoints on the, the camping spots above the bomb site to see if anyone's sneaking around there. And again, his map control is really good. And unfortunately, the guy on that team <laughs> decides to push the spawn, have a little nosy round that Adam gets to jump on him. It's a bit lucky, perhaps, on Adam's part, but sometimes, you know, those things come off and it's just shows the awareness of Adam to actually go back and look for his look through their spawn um, to find the last guy and, and to show his confidence as well because he could have just camped and waited on the bomb site there but he didn't he decided to carry on prowling and pick up that, that other kill so again that was the third six man ace in this game to take it to 3-3 three, three. so he's got three six man aces in this game almost unheard of in certain destroy gameplay and there's only two people on the team as well which is another remarkable thing people probably won't notice from this gameplay but so many people left leaving Adam ridiculously outnumbered against the team here so you can see he takes the same route um, the successful route that he's had in previous rounds and he pushes around to their spawn again with ease and now he's got the advantage because he's coming from a way, uh, an advantage point that no one's going to expect him to come from and he's just waiting it out now so he picks up a guy AFK in the spawn who is Perhaps not helping his team in the slightest. And this is a great bit of work here. So he pulls off the C4 after ducking behind cover after getting some damage. He sees shots coming from another direction. So he picks up another point where he's in cover. And I just that little clip there where he survived that whole um, episode was um, amazing. And, and just a credit to um, perhaps his movement and his skills on the sticks. Because, you know, he's taking shots from both directions. He's, he's flashing red. He almost got killed with the C4. He's under pressure. And he manages to take um, a guy out with a bit of good map control and here I really like he ducks behind cover to pick up that kill and then just waits out the last guy before ending the game with another epic four kill round so all in all it's the gameplay's finished on 23 for 2 he's the only guy left on the team and he manages to come back from a serious deficit and win the round all in all an absolute beast gameplay so yeah, like I said guys, this is part of a, uh, a series that I do called Tactic Talk. What I'm going to be doing is actually getting your gameplay um, and analysing it. So if you want to send me any Search and Destroy gameplays that you like, please make sure they're in HD. They can be in your file share or you can send me the recorded video clips if you want. And I will dissect them and upload them to this channel. Um, otherwise, make sure you check out Adam's channel. Uh, the link will be in the description and there's an annotation on your screen right now. He is an absolute beast player and specialises in Search and Destroy and I do not use the term specialise lightly. He is a fantastic Search and Destroy player. Make sure you head over to his channel and check him out and I will see you again soon. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please feel free to drop me a like and share it with your friends. That would be greatly appreciated. If you want your gameplay to become part of my Tactic Talk series, then feel free to send your clips to the uh, email address in the description. Alternatively, you can save your uh, gameplays in your file share on theater mode, and I can capture them that way. 
At the top box is a video that I've uploaded previously, it's some live commentary S&D with Adam, uh, feel free to check it out, it's hilarious, and uh, the bottom box is a video that I've uploaded in the past from my channel that you may not have seen. Um, feel free to come say hi on Twitter and Facebook, my profiles are in the description, and if you want to subscribe to the channel you can click on the logo on the right hand side of your screen. And as always, I'll see you again soon. Peace out.